even in years when snow can't seem to find us, thousands of skiers travel back to nature to find it. And Chronicle is no exception. Now that's what I'm talking about. We love to ski. From bunny hills to black diamonds, we've got 40 years of history on the slopes. But what does 400 years of ski history look like? To find out, we traveled to the New England Ski Museum at the base of Cannon Mountain in New Hampshire with author and historian E. John B. Allen. A Swedish bishop got kicked out of, uh, out of Sweden uh, because of the uh, Reformation, and he wrote this vast book. The original 16th century images recreated here are considered the first printed depictions of skiers whose northern European descendants would 300 years later arrive in New England with their skis in tow. This story and many others are outlined in Allen's 2022 book, Traveling the Old Ski Tracks of New England. When folks up in Berlin, New Hampshire, uh, started their ski club, it was all Norwegians, and the uh, minutes of the meetings are in Norwegian, it's very, pretty cliquey for a while. A main cabinet maker, Theo Johnson, helped to expand the sport in 1905 when he started selling skis and advertising how to use them. I think it's the first real how to ski book in the United States. History leaves the pages in the museum where you can see an actual early Theo Johnson ski. It just shows you how really well, how fine they were, how really well made, very carefully made. Look at the tips and so on. And they would just tie them to regular boots? There were no ski boots until probably 1910-ish. A walk through the museum shows the evolution of ski boots and some less successful experiments. But a clue to the area's biggest innovation lives just outside. Today, trams and lifts are indispensable, but that wasn't always the case. You go up Cannon Mountain on your skis and come down, and you're a pretty good skier if you go up a second time and come down. One of the first trams in the U.S. was built right here in 1938, revolutionizing the amount of runs you could make in a day. Despite all of this history, the museum's most popular attraction remains local legend Bodie Miller's Olympic gold medals. Miller made his mark as an alpine skier, a downhill, speed-based style that originally took off in the 1930s. If you look at the, uh, the um, poster of the 1932 Olympic Games held in Lake Placid, you will see that the image is of a jumper. That was then, this is now, as modern Olympics have added yet another twist. Freestyle skiing is skiing terrain and doing tricks on skis. Wesley Preston is a program director at Loon Freestyle in New Hampshire. It's actually a family business, family passion. Um, we ended up in New Hampshire because my father got a job at Waterville Valley as the program director for the freestyle team. And my brother and I grew up in that. These early days of freestyle skiing were well documented by our sister station WMUR in 2010 when they spoke with Wesley's dad, Nick Preston, about the sport. So the demands of the sport have increased uh, tremendously and therefore the performance of the sport has evolved considerably. Paying it forward, Wesley now teaches freestyle skiing to the next generation. So, so name some of the moves. From the very basic, a spread eagle, and then we go into grabbing your skis or crossing your skis and iron cross. It looks so cool. So yeah, definitely. Before you can safely pose for a pick like this, you need hours on this. Wesley starts his students inside on a padded trampoline. A lot of people may think of it as a daredevil sport, but it's really a training sport that you learn the fundamentals and then you step up to the next level and slowly progress to those complicated, difficult tricks you may see on the, in the Olympics or on the X Games. Though Wesley does not work with adults, he makes a special exception to see if he can teach this seasoned reporter my first trick. Yep, yeah, and then this is the T-bounce. I feel like I'm in the movie Big. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, and I'm then, ready, coach. What's next? Okay, 
You could go for the spread eagle. Spread eagle! Woo! She looks good. And E. John B. Allen's book, Traveling the Old Ski Tracks of New England, has a lot of fascinating history. Right, including, you know, records of ski hills from Newton all the way out to Pittsfield, even a ski factory. We put that in quotes because they were handmade right. back in the day at a barn in Concord, as a matter of fact. Crazy. Incredible. All right.